Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second Snap Take of the Day. It is Sunday evening, and we are going to talk about a deck you need to know and a deck that is not the deck you need to know that is performing even better than this stalwart. Before we talk about those decks, the first of which you can see on the screen in front of you, I'd like you to hit that like and subscribe button. We are less than one week away from the biggest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap. We give away at least five season passes. Hard to imagine it won't be at least eight or nine by the time we get there. We give away an absolute ton of season passes. Make sure you're subbed so you don't miss out. We also make sure that you are completely caught up on the meta, but not just caught up. We make sure that you stay ahead of the meta. Our goal is to keep you ahead of the other content creators. As the buff um, and patch happened, magic was changed. And one of the main places that magic started to go was Mr. Negative decks. Mr. Negative ends up a really great deck, and magic being a three cost, it was logical that Negative Surfer would become a home. This deck can play both with and without um, Mr. Negative. It can play a standard Surfer game plan where it does something like get out um, a three drop on three, say, for example, a brood, and then on four, it would um, play a magic, on five, it would play Iron Man, on six, it would play Mystique Surfer, and that'll win you a fair snap. Um, that'll actually also give you an extra turn because you played magic. So let's say you throw a wolf or a rogue to steal something, or even on four, um, you could Wong and then play a brood on six or seven with your Surfer. It's a great way to win the game, put a lot of power in Obviously, this all goes way up with uh, negative, and Bast pumps the entire deck. Bast and Iron Man should not need an explanation uh, from anyone at this point coming out of the bounce season. It's incredible. It also works on Mystique um, to double if that's copying Iron Man. Mystique also copies Wong for a million Surfer or Wolfsbane triggers. Those are the two main ones. Also, it'll trigger I a whole bunch of times as well. These are ways to win, again, an awful lot of games that this deck is super consistent and super cool and super powerful. TLSG and Cozy both have versions that they put out there. This is the version that I think is close to the best. Um, despite the presence of both Mr. Negative and Wong, I think there is a genuine and real argument for Psylocke over Zabu in this deck. So if that is the card you're missing, uh, Zabu is the only series four or higher card here. I think Psylocke is a really good change because on two, Psylocke still lets you get there's Psylocke still lets you get out um your negative early or Wong early. And then on four, you're just playing the other card anyway, right? So you don't especially need that cost reduction. Um, but what Psylocke offers is on turn late on a later turn, say turn five or six, you can play Psylocke on top of Wong and get two extra energy for the next turn. Two extra energy is often extremely valuable. That's enough to play, for example, a negative surfer or a negative brood, which you would not otherwise be able to play, and that can win you a game of Marvel Snap. Uh, this deck is super powerful, super synergistic, and I'm uh, assuming you're seeing it everywhere. If you're wondering what it is, what it does, this is it. The simplest way to beat it is honestly to go just straight up over the top, but other things that really put a damper on this deck's day are Cosmo and that Wong lane can be extraordinarily frustrating, especially if you time it until when they're trying to go off. And um, if you're running that cause when you know where they're going to negative, don't be afraid to shut down their negative either. We've also got things like Echo, although they can probably try and play around that. Enchantress and Rogue might be better for you there, specifically Enchantress since this deck runs a Rogue itself. This deck puts an awful lot of power on the board. I've had a reasonable amount of success with it, as in I haven't lost a series to it yet because I'm mostly playing Conquest. I've played it a lot. Um, with the uh, safety blade version of the phoenix force move which was friday's first deck of the day i think it's the best deck in the game still um, but this is a lot of power this is where everyone went with negative because the big creators pushed it but as i was looking through a bunch of stats i have no idea who made this deck um this ended up being a better statted mr negative deck it is running a fair number of similar cards here um it's still trying to run magic iron man and um Steak and negative but everything else about this deck is really different um it's basically saying if i have an extra turn that's an extra turn to do null and zola and put a massive power on the board and i've got jane to draw everything as long as i draw jane before i play negative this has no way to cheat out negative it's instead running 
page. It's saying I will play negative on four or five and be happy about it because at that point I will go off. It's running Jane and Jane uh, has anti synergy with fast. It becomes a five three, which is obviously significantly worse than a five eight. That's the largest place Luke Cage comes in in this deck. Luke Cage bounces that back up to an eight unexpectedly, and that obviously has extra synergy and value with Iron Man and Mystique. Zola on Null is obviously the key Zola play, and Shang-Chi helps to feed that, but you can also conceivably Zola and Iron Man or Mystique, they will all keep the ability of the card they copied. Null on 6 and Mystique on 7, if there's been enough cards destroyed, is also a really, really good play. Um, Mystique and Shang-Chi are both playable on turn 7 together without any extra shenanigans, or even Mr. in that case. Ironheart obviously puts a bunch of power on the board, Angela puts a bunch of power on the board, and Jane gets you a bunch of draw. This deck does not want for early plays, which is really, really nice for a Mr. Negative deck. A lot of the times as you're playing Jane um, with other versions of the deck, you'll find that you don't have enough cards to be able to, enough, excuse me, hand space to be able to draw everything you want. This deck has earlier plays, so you should be able to draw most of the cards. Um, even again, even if you're playing a relatively fair Zola and Null, that should work out relatively fine as long as some other things are being destroyed. If you destroy, for example, a Hulk on their side with Shang Chi, um, you're still putting um, 24 power into locations with that Zola. Again, it is worth noting that this deck has a higher win rate than the other, even though it looks less powerful at first sight. But I think it's important to know that just because content creators, including myself, are telling you a deck is good, doesn't automatically make it the one you should play. I think this version is also worthy of playing. I think both are honestly probably really good decks. And I think negative is in a really, really good place. What this deck has going for it is it doesn't have the immediate, easy, and obvious weakness to Cosmo that the other deck has. Cosmo's still good against it, but no longer breaks it. While... um. This deck is weaker to ongoing control, but I'm still seeing less Echo Rogue and uh, Echo Rogue and Enchantress than I probably should be. The map is not. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning with two more decks, and then tomorrow afternoon with yet another. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace.